Well, hello, hello. So how was your weekend? Well, you know it's me, Pastor Garlinda Price with Common Ground Ministry. I'm sorry I'm late talk coming up. Uh, I cannot talk. I'm sorry I'm late coming to talk to y'all tonight. So you all know that I said I will not share what is not of God. And so I really wasn't sure what he wanted me to share. I kind of had in mind an idea of what I wanted to talk about and the direction I was going to go in, but I had to wait and listen. I had to really listen to praise and worship. And I kept telling Marvin, can you turn the TV down and get ready to record a video? He said, you said that an hour ago. Because <laughs> it's taken me an hour of praise and worship to be like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to share, right? Because I'm always so mindful, and I know you are too, mindful of saying only what thus saith the Lord, right? And so I also have a confession. So Friday... <sighs> Okay, so Thursday, just disclaimer first, right? Thursday I had to preach out of town in Fairmont, North Carolina. So I think by the time I left Fairmont, it was like 9 o'clock maybe, close to 9, 8.30, 9 o'clock. Well, who knew Fairmont was 14 miles from south of the border? I saw it said 14 miles to Dillon, I think it said, or 14 miles to Pedro. I was like, what in the world? I had no idea it was that far. So by the time I got home, I got a little lost. So by the time I got home, it was close to 11 o'clock. And then I don't know what happened, but it was like after 12 when I went to sleep. So guess what happened? I know. I overslept. I was so devastated. It seemed like I was laying there for a long time. And so what happened was I forgot to set the alarm clock on my phone. And I didn't wake up until 630. So needless to say, for a year... I have not missed, well, almost a year, not a year yet, but let me see. It'll be a year in April. So, January, yeah, so for a long time. So, let's see, nine, so for nine months, I have not missed waking up early. And then, bam, one night, I get home late and I forget to set my alarm clock. And it's the only entry in my journals that doesn't have a word from the Lord. I was devastated. And so I was like, God, what am I going to do, right? But, you know, it's not like I can sit there and make up something, right? So not that I couldn't have written something at 630, but all of a sudden it seemed like the day sped up and like Friday was gone in a lightning storm, right? But that night was so awesome. God is so good. Because that night we went to um, Kingdom Impact. They had a marriage, um, like a marriage program um, through their marriage ministry. It was so good. And so it was held by... Apostle um, Ford and his beautiful wife, Pastor Glendora Ford. And um, so their scripture, you know, lined up with a scripture that we had referenced and covered during Tuesday night Bible study. So I said, okay, God. So if I couldn't write something there because I wasn't going to make up that God said anything, God said you can write. So he said I could write a scripture there. So I was able to write the scripture there. And then that led me to what I wanted to share with you because of what the scripture said. But it just took me a minute to get to the point. So I've spent all that three minutes just to confess that I didn't have a writing in my book for Friday. And I was so broken hearted about it and upset about it. But God is a God of grace, right? And so luckily I was able to replace it with a scripture. But there have been some of you that have messaged me and told me that you woke up at 430. And that you had your pen, your paper, and your Bible in hand. And so I assure you I'm not going to miss setting my alarm clock either. The only time I don't wake up early like that is on the weekend so believe it or not i look forward to saturday and sunday morning right so i can sleep late but i do it every day during the week so i encourage you keep doing it you're going to hear from god he's going to answer your prayers and he is going to show up and show out for you just be consistent with it right it's going to work he is going to talk to you and he probably already has has already begun to talk to you and answer your prayers and give you clarity and direction so he had to give me clarity and direction tonight so the word of the lord for you you need to go and begin to visualize some things. The world is full of my beauty. You need to begin again to open your eyes to the wonder and the splendor and the opportunities surrounding you. You need to and you must begin to speak life. For what you say, you absolutely shall have. What you visualize will manifest itself. So what are you thinking about? You must begin to become mindful of your thoughts and mindful of the things you say and the things you do mindful of the way you treat others for it is a reflection of how you treat God how so you say the word of God says to love your neighbor as yourself because they too were made in God's image so how you treat those you see versus 
he whom you have not seen is a direct correlation or reflection of who you are inside. So let it be good. Let go of bitterness. Let go of pettiness. Let go of rivalries, says the Lord of hosts. There is victory in the small things if you would just begin. And there is joy in the larger things if you would stay the course and see the beauty of the journey. Success does not come before tears are shed, nor does rejoicing come before sorrow. There is safety in a multitude of counselors, says the Lord of hosts. Begin to put your plans in perspective. Place your priorities in the right order, says the Lord of hosts. Place your trust in the one who sees over the horizon, off into the distance, that answers before you even pray. Seek the counsel of the Lord, for that is all that will withstand, says the Lord of hosts. In Jesus' holy and matchless name we pray. Amen. So the scripture that I wanted to share with you, which was the one thing I wrote down as my Friday journal entry, uh, but all is well, was um, it was a couple, but this is the one I wrote down, was 1 Peter 3, 7 through 8. But let me read you something before we read that. So in Ephesians 5, 22, 23, and I'll share that scripture with you here. It says, Wives, submit, to, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. Right? So, um, let me see if I want to read that. Then I want you to go with me to 1 Peter 3 and 7 through 8. This is the Amplified Version, and this was the one scripture that I wrote down, right? And when I got it, so of course this won't be for single people yet that are not married. And if you're having challenges in your marriage or you're separated or you're divorced it doesn't mean that this doesn't pertain to you because it's still covenant law right so it does pertain to you um there may it, and it'll have to be something that you pray about okay so i'm gonna just leave it at that but first peter 3 7 through 8 but this is the word of the lord so that makes it a fact and it makes it true and this was the eye-opening experience i had at church on friday and i'm gonna tell y'all what i said to marvin after we um read it and, and understood it so in the same way you husbands live with your wives in an understanding way with great gentleness and tact with an intelligent regard for the marriage relationship. Again, this is the amplified version. As with someone physically weaker, since she is a woman, show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. I said, say what, Bible? It said, show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective so why am i saying that because i understood when the man of god read it when the apostle read it even though i had read it that tuesday it didn't necessarily register for me i think that it did but it didn't register for me like it did on friday that if you're married right and if you have ill speech amongst you and you're arguing and I'm calling you names or you're calling me names and I'm like, boy, be quiet. No, girl, you be quiet. And we're just blah, 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 bickering back and forth, arguing with one another, right? As we all have disagreements in our marriage, but the, the man of God talked about not letting the sun go down on your wrath. And he described wrath as um, something that will cause you to take action and anger, right? And he described anger as something where you have ill will or ill feelings towards your husband or your wife. But the word of God says that your prayers will be hindered, right? And so what that means is that if we... Um, bicker and argue as married couples and we disrespect one another and we don't love each other like Christ loved the church and we don't love our neighbor as ourselves that as husband and wife that our prayers are hindered right so I thought about that thing and I looked at Marvin I said I ain't never arguing with you again I don't care how bad you cut up I don't care what you say 
I'm not, I'm just not even going to argue with you, right? Because I think about in our life and in our relationship, all the arguments that we've had over the dumbest things, over, you know, just disrespecting each other, over nonsense, right? Just out the course of our, we've been together 25 years, so y'all know we've had some arguments and disagreements, right? And I think about those things and how much did they hinder our blessings? How much did they hinder or hold up what God had for us because of it, of disagreements is so foolish, right? And so the word of God says to read it one more time, right? Because it had to marinate for me. It says, show her honor and respect as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered or ineffective. And so when we disagree with one another and let it be, let it become a root or let it cause arguments that stay and we don't repent and we don't ask for forgiveness and we don't ask each other for forgiveness, you know, one to another and honor one another, it hinders our prayers and the things that God has for us. And I looked at him and I said, I wonder how many things have been held up because of you and I arguing about silly stuff, about simple things, just something to think about, right? And so let's say even in the word of God that if we have an ought against our brother and we don't go and ask for forgiveness and when I say brother I mean our neighbor if we have an ought against a friend we have an ought against a family member and we go to God and we want to ask him for something the word of God says that first we must go to the person that um, we've offended or the person that we're offended by and we must ask for forgiveness right or our prayers are hindered he won't hear anything so think about people that you need to forgive on today think about your husband or wife that you need to ask for forgiveness of today and say honey I'm sorry I apologize I told him honey I love you I apologize I ain't argue with you no more because I'm not going to have the blessings of God and the blessings of our family held up because I want to be right because I want to be right right or you hold it up because you want to be right it's not even worth it so I pray that this word has blessed you I'm not going to belabor the point but God is so good and he loves us so much that he would send his word of love he would send his word of grace and peace and he would send his word of correction that we would have life abundantly here on the earth so I love you here's to the 4 30 a.m club right <laughs> I hope y'all have an amazing week and I pray that you hear from God all that you desire to hear by way of answers by way of clarification by way of revelation and by way of blessing i love you and i'll talk to you soon bye